Money cannot buy happiness, but I'ma tell you something. That shit can definitely alleviate stress. Okay, so today has been a stressful day for numerous reasons. I need to come here and vent for a second because I'm just angry and I'm exhausted and I wanna cry and um, I've got a few disclaimers. If you do not feel comfortable with me discussing these private things about my life, leave this video now. There are other girls who are going through exactly what I'm going through and don't have the help or the support. So I'm going to share my story with them just so that they don't feel like they have to go through this on their own and that they don't feel like this is something that's just isolated to them. Because if I didn't have my mum, genuinely would feel like I'm the only person that goes through this because in this life people just aren't honest about things that are really happening to them. I don't have time to be pretending I'm living a life that I'm not because it's exhausting. Do that. I feel like we just do that just to help other people. I'm not here to help other people feel comfortable about what's happening in my life because guess what? It's my life. I'm the one that's living it. I'm the one who has to wake up every single day and deal with what's happening in my life. Nobody else does. You guys go about and live your lives. If you have some advice that would be helpful and it's not judgmental. My makeup diet is a judge-free zone. No time for people and their judgment. I'm really angry. I'm angry because I feel like all I ever do is take the advice of people who think they have their best interests at heart for me and things still go wrong and I'm just like, so now what? And the thing is, when people come with their verbal, uh, verbal advice and they don't come with their practical advice, when things go wrong, they're usually not there either. That's what I found. I didn't, when I had, um, when I was first homeless, and I am going to make a video about this because um, this is a whole experience that I wish I'd have vlogged when I was going through it because I was so depressed. But I thought uni was bad. I thought I was depressed in uni. Emotionally, I just didn't know how to cope. And I really wish, like I said, I would have vlogged that because that opened, that was adulthood for me. Adulthood slap because I was having to deal with not having anywhere to live and actually understanding how important it is to have an address dealing with the council people and dealing with what i knew i wanted for my life but what they needed me to do and what i had to do in order for them to help me in this life you don't get nothing for free nothing is free benefits are not free houses that they give girls who've had babies are not free these things are not free so people who come here and they say these things are free or they're giving it to you for it's not for free I never ever for a day in my life wanted to be on benefits and I remember that from when I had my daughter I had to go and sign on now in my head it was like calm fine we're just gonna do this I start back from college in September because literally I had my daughter in October and the next the following September I went back to school I wasn't playing any games first of all there was the pressure from my age mates I was like look here yeah, my age mates cannot surpass me in this life I must also do A levels I must also do uni and that as well is for like another separate video I'm happy that I had that motivation within me because it made me go back to school. It made me want more for myself. And I always had a plan before I even had it in my plan. I never had planned to have her. So when I had it, it was like, come, like, baby on the back, let's go. Like, that, that was my attitude because everybody else around me who had been single mums, they'd made it work. So in my head, I'm going to make it work as well. It's by force. It's actually my fault, there's no other way. So back to I went to makeup school first and then I went back to do my A-levels and then I completed my A-levels and I went to uni. Another story for another day. After I left uni, I was in the same position again. My mum had kicked me out before I went to uni so I knew that going back there wasn't really an option like that. Um, plus I didn't want to go back home because I felt that in the presence of my mum and my nan as well, who's another person who offered to have me, my mental health deteriorates because of the way they interact with me it's it, it was too much like anybody who is who is ready to leave their parents house knows what I mean I just feel like there's just some things I just won't tolerate in this I, I've been through a lot you know like red flag offenses like there's it, it's a red card offense when it happens you just can't like they are red card people once they show me that I, I'm just not gonna put myself in that kind of situation again and that's why I didn't really want to live with them I knew that if it came if push came to shove me then I would have no choice but to go back there but it would be with the greatest of reluctance plus I wanted the independence of myself I wanted to run a house on my own I want I wanted that for my daughter I wanted my daughter to have her own room like I feel like things like that are important for the first 10 years of my life I didn't have my own room room me and my mum slept in the same room we slept in the same bed like that was the realest shit like, these are things that when they happen to you and you have kids you don't want the same thing to happen that happened to your kid to happen to you so I was like do you know what I'm gonna go to Luton 
to be in a place where I felt like I'd be able to save because saving is something that is very, very important for me, especially as I have my own business and, and I want to be able to put money into my business to make it bigger and to, to you know, bigger my reach and stuff like that. I knew that I needed a place where the costs were low. I'd be able to spend small amounts of money in order to live, but I'd also be able to have the things that I need as well. The main reason why I'm triggered today is because I spoke briefly about this in my phone got wiped vlog and it was about finding a job that's accommodating to the schedule of my daughter and that also allows me to save. I'm not trying to save £10,000 a month, okay? I'm not unrealistic. But a nice 10, 20, 30 pounds a week or a month, it all adds up and savings are savings at the end of the day. I want to be able to do things like go on holiday. Bruv, I'm not saying I want to go to Dubai. A calm little trip to Paris is enough for me. I think what I like about this job is more so the people that I work with, more so than the job. Like, I do like the job, but the people you have to deal with sometimes I don't like. And I'm the kind of person I get really emotionally attached to everything. And in my job, I really want to help people. And when people are rude to me, I don't know how to deal with it because I just, I'm not being rude to you, I'm trying to help. So that's one thing I don't like about the job, but I really like the people that I work with. And this is the first job I feel like I've ever had that I've really been like, I don't want to leave this place, I really like it here. But the only thing is, the job is far. That's why I started driving. That's what that's what the car was for. The car was for the job. The car was so that I could work closer to London and make the minimum amount of money that you can make in London in order to help me be able to save. Because where I work, the minimum wage is like seven pounds something. And that is not enough for anybody to live on. That will help you collect debt. You see that amount of money there? It will make you think you have money and it will help you collect debt. It's not a real that's not a real amount of money and I know that because I lived on it and we literally I lived paycheck to paycheck like support check to support check just in order to do things like pay my bills and eat food like that was literally all we were doing we never went anywhere I feel so bad because my daughter said to me the other day like we it's not like that anymore since I've got this new job we are able to do a little bit more stuff but she said to me like mom like we don't go anywhere and it's because I don't have any friends here. Like I've got a really limit, like I can count on one hand how many friends I have in, in this place where we live. And, and all my friends live in London. That really made me sad. And that is, that is the, what you can afford to do when you make seven pound 80 an hour and you're only able to work 15 hours a week. Because that's another issue. I'm not able to work nine to five like everybody else. I'm on, when I say I'm on my own, my mum lives 30 miles away from me so she can't finish work at the same time as me and can't pick up my child because she lives half an hour away like it's not actually not possible where she can she does and my mum like I said my mum does what she can for me like she goes above and beyond but when there's not other people around me who can support me in that way that means I can't work this hours. I do want to work nine to five just for the money and there isn't anybody else to help me. So that means subsequently I can't do that job unless I'm willing to give my child to somebody I don't know and be like, thank you for looking after my kid. Which again is another cost incurred that I have to think about. I feel personally, I feel like this is too much. I never signed up for any of this. I never asked for any of this. I didn't, if I knew this is what adulthood was like, I would have stayed a baby. If I knew this is what life was going to be like, I would have stayed in my mum's ovary. Like, big man thing, this is way more stress than... For me, that it makes it feel like it's not worth it. Like, like if every day I'm worried about money and I'm stressing about bills and, and it's because I don't want to be in debt. I don't want to put myself in financial situations where I know I'm not going to be able to survive. I do want to one day buy a house. I, I do want to one day have the option to get a car on finance if I want to. But if you, if you land yourself into some dead credit, like you can't do any of those things. And I feel like these are things that are playing in my mind, they're part of my circumstance. I don't know, like I just, what the hell am I supposed to do? Like seriously, like what am I supposed to do? Cause like I said, I want to stay where I work. So I want to, I want to change my hours um so that i can continue to work there because i like it but then i'm thinking is it worth working there when i was in benefit only going to contribute 26 pounds 82 to my rent each week and that would mean that i can't run my car which means i can't actually get to work which means i can't actually make that money and if i did continue to run my car in order to keep that job things like groceries would struggle and i'm just thinking how am i supposed to afford things like my daughter's uniform when 
three quarters of my paycheck is going to my rent. Like, did I miss a lesson in school which taught you how to juggle the impossible finances of adulthood? Like, did I miss that lesson? Was I absent that day? Because I feel like in school I was so misled. Is it just me? I feel like I, I feel like I was so misled. I feel like all the adults in my life misled me as well. Why did no one tell me that most of the time the amount of money you make every month from work does not cover how much it actually costs to live? Why did no one tell me that? Because I swear if I knew this I probably would have become a stripper or like a drug kingpin because they always got peanut. I'm, I'm not being serious but like maybe I would have been in the pursuit of like marrying somebody who has more money. Like I'm actually starting to understand them girls who have their whole psyche built around marrying somebody with money because it just stops you from experiencing this which is just dead then i said to the guy at the council as well when i went to go because i had to go and get a letter from the old place i used to work um you have to be self-employed in order it's like it was a call center as well but it was like a self-employed thing they pay you every week you instead of being employed by them you're self-employed i to this day i don't understand why i think it's very very booky and very dodgy but whatever i worked there and um, I had to go to them and get a letter basically saying that I don't work there anymore and that they don't pay me anymore because obviously as I'm self-employed I just don't have to go to work and they won't pay me there's nothing to pay me for so there's no I don't are you meant to get p45 when you finish the self-employment I don't know someone tell me again like these are things that we should be learning at school that we're not learning I don't, why are we not learning about p45s and p65s and p55s or whatever they're called why are we not being taught about these things why are we not being taught about our national insurance? Why are we not being taught these things? I really don't understand why it's not part of the curriculum and I'm really losing my temper here because I could be just, I could just be ignorant. I could just not know and this is normal, but that even that in itself, not knowing is frustrating. So I gave them the letter and I took it down to the council and I explained why I needed to bring this letter because obviously the person that you speak to on the phone and the person you see in, in the council is a completely different person. So I was explaining it to him and I was saying like, do you have any careers advice for me? Like I'm all open to careers advice right now. What job can I get where you guys will still pay my, some of my rent and I'm still able to, you know, live a decent life. I'm not just surviving. Because people, a lot of the people on benefits are just, we're just surviving. We're literally, our heart is beating. There's air in our lungs. There's minimal food in your stomach, yeah? And you are not, you're not, like, in poverty. Like, you're not homeless and starving. But you can't really afford to do anything. Like, I don't drink alcohol, guys. So... That's a whole expense that I avoid whenever I do indulge in going out. And even still, I can't really afford to go out because I can just about afford my cab there and back. That's why I'm happy that I have YouTube and sometimes I do get frustrated with my lack of engagement on here. Again, these things take time and I, I'm willing to be patient when it comes to the social media thing, but um, my phone got wiped vlog. Somebody did suggest that I look into teaching assistant. So I'm going to look at some jobs for that because obviously now would be the time they're probably hiring for that because it's September and a few days. And hopefully, who knows, maybe next time I come up here and tell you about my life, I'm a teaching assistant in a school. But, yeah, man. I just kind of wish I didn't have to go for any of this. I feel really bad for bringing my daughter into this as well. Like, that's, that's I think that's what upsets me the most. Because I just think, like, I feel like I don't want to be here. And I feel like this is stressful for me. Like, my daughter didn't ask for this. I made a selfish decision to have her and I told myself that I'd be able to support her and look after her and all these things and now I can just about do that, like literally, like, I can do all of that, I can look after her and support her, make sure she eats, make sure she has everything, but then it's just like, at my own expense. And I feel bad because when I'm not in a good place, like, I'm, I don't feel like I'm the best mum I can be as well, which again, it's just like a fucking cycle, like I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. If you don't understand what I'm talking about in this video, I'm sorry that I just came and had an angry waffle vent at you. But yeah, this is life of a real mum fam. This is life of a real single mum. I'm tired and I'm exhausted.